Okay, so welcome back to another video. So to close off 2023, let's actually take care of a interval. It has nothing to do with the number 2023, to be honest. I'm just going to say that out, right? But for today's or today's video slash the final video of 2023, we're going to take care of a definite integral from 0 to 1 of phi, aka that being the golden ratio number, to the power of the negative floor of 1 over x dx. So something as simple as that, well, you know, if you look at it into another like deeper perspective, that we can actually do something in terms of, you know, use substitutions. And then with the course being the floor function uh, utilized to our integrand, what we can do is uh, the strategy beyond with dealing with integrals and utilizing the floor functions that we actually want to break this up. So we actually have a sum of definite integrals, you know, increasing with our bounds. Then if we just evaluate that, then we can actually manipulate some things to summarize, you know, the simplification better. There's also going to be some of a, well, specifically a Taylor series slash McLaren series utilized to actually make the substitution easier. So a um, golden ratio value is going to be a part of our answer. So something golden to end off this year, if that even makes sense, if anything, maybe that's just a neat thing. But with that out of the way, why don't we actually just jump right in? So first, uh, let's actually just utilize what the definition of the floor function is. That being, you know, the greatest integer function. So that means I have the floor of x is going to equal to k such that k is an integer and also that x is in the bound between inclusive to k and then to non-inclusive k plus 1. So using that definition, so now let's actually perform our little u sub. We'll let u equals 1 over x. So to make things a little easier, so we have a dx differential. Of course, we have to do that differentiation for both sides. How about I actually solve for x on its own? So doing so, I have that this is going to be x is equal to 1 divided by u. And then differentiating both sides, so that means I have that dx is going to equal to negative 1 divided by u squared and then du. So putting all this back together into here, so now we have our new bounds or our new you know, differential substitution and in the new variable in terms of u. So if we plug in our variables for the bounds, so I have one for x, so that means put that over here. So that's gonna lead us to just one on the top. And then if I plug in zero over here, this is actually going to approach positive infinity. And so we now have phi and then to the power negative, the floor of u, and then substitute this in um, our differential back for dx. So now du, so negative one divided by u squared and then du. Then we can simplify things even further such that I'll switch the bounds. That becomes a negative, but then that negative actually cancels out from over here. So that'll just yield with just phi to the power negative, the floor of u, and then divided by u squared and then du. Okay, so, and of course change our bounds. So it's gonna be from now positive one to positive infinity, okay. So with this in mind, let's actually now utilize the floor function definition. So as I mentioned, we're actually going to be breaking up our um, bounds of integration. So of course, everything is a sum of definite integrals and we can actually apply the linearity, linearity to it. So in other words, to order um, see the uh, bigger picture out of this, we're going to break our bounds in steps of ones, the units one, since by utilizing the definition of the floor function, k is an integer. So in other words, that's the same thing written is that we have our bounds from one to two, Add this with our bounds from two to three, add this from our bounds from three to four. You just keep going on so on and so forth. So add this with plus, so that leaves us with the term k and then all the way up to k plus one of phi to the power of the negative floor of u. So aka, in other words, that's the same thing written as we can just replace this for just k since by definition of the floor function, and then divided by u squared and then du. So in other words, what we're dealing with is we actually have an infinite sum. So we have the infinite sum at, what is it? k is equal to one of the integral from k to k plus one of phi to the power of negative k and then divided by u squared and then followed by du. And then with this being the case, phi to the negative k, that has nothing to do with in terms of u, so I can actually factor that outside. So I have our infinite sum at k is equal to one. So I have phi to the power of negative k, and then we're evaluating from our bounds from k to k plus one of one divided by u square and then du. Okay, so that's a pretty easy um, definite integral to solve. We know that the antiderivative of one divided by u square, the well-known um, antiderivative of that is basically negative one divided by u. So now all we have to do is actually just apply a, um, we just need to you know put in our bounds for k and then k plus one. So let's see, infinite sum, k is equal to one, phi to the negative k, 
Then over here is going to be negative 1 divided by u, plug in from k to k plus 1. And of course, since it's a negative and then minus a negative, I'm actually going to put that term first back into here. So that means I have the infinite sum k is equal to 1 of phi of negative k. Then what we have is going to be 1 divided by k and then subtract 1 divided by k plus 1. All right. So what we can do here is now let's actually not only um, distribute the phi to negative k back to everything, then also apply the linearity to the sums. I'm also another step, another thing I'll do is I'll actually write this as a um, fraction. So phi of negative k is the same thing as one divided by phi, that quantity to the power k. So in other words, we have this. So we first have our infinite sum, k is equal to one of first is gonna be one divided by phi to the power k then divide it by k, then subtract. So now our infinite sum over here, k is equal to one of one divided by phi, then to the power k, and then divide it by k plus one. So what I'm gonna do here is that we're actually gonna, let me actually manipulate this infinite sum over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to multiply and divide a one divided by phi to both our numerator and denominator, which you'll see in a sec why I actually perform such manipulation because now um, to simplify everything back together, so, so far we have you know, the infinite sum. So of course our first sum over here hasn't changed. So one divided by phi to the power k divided by k. So now over here, what we have is, so let's see, that can actually go into that base. So I add a plus one to our exponent over here and then I put that outside the constant. In other words, that's just the same thing written as phi. And then now multiply with our infinite sum over here, k is equal to one of one divided by phi to the power k plus one and then divided by k plus one. Okay, now we know that specifically, so next step we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna be utilizing a nice little um, Taylor series. So the Taylor series in question we'll be using is specifically the following. We're gonna use that the negative natural log of one minus x, the expansion is gonna be written as follows. So we have the infinite sum at k is equal to one of x to the power, um, k and then divided by k. So that being, of course, that x can be, the absolute value of x is in between um, strictly less than one. So within that bound over here, which of course, what's in the input for over here is actually does validate things. So because of this, we can now just um, replace everything in terms of the um, negative natural log function of this input. So in other words, I have the negative ln of one minus one divided by phi then next I have phi, then multiply with negative the natural log of one minus one divided by phi. And because that this is diff written differently because we have a k plus one and a k plus one. So you expand this out. So it's like a two and then a three and then a four, but you're missing the k equals one term from over just like this example over here. So you actually have to subtract that term from what the expansion is. So with that being the case with that new substitution, so it'd be this following, but then I then later have to subtract the term from that k equals one will be just did earlier, which is written as minus one divided by phi. Okay, so just make sure not to mess this up because sometimes that can actually, you know, it can be a little tricky to, you know, miss that um, it will mess everything up. So with all that out of the way, so in other words, now I have a one minus one divided by phi. So that's actually a nice little identity that I can write. That's the same thing as one divided by phi square. And then this is great that we can actually utilize some um, natural law properties such that, so one divided by phi square, so now continuing forward, so I have a one divided by phi square. In other words, that can be the same thing as phi to the negative two. I'll actually move that negative two outside to an exponent. So that becomes a positive two multiplied by the natural log of phi. And then now going back to over here, so minus, as though that's the same thing over here, that becomes a positive. So it's two times the natural log of phi. So it's gonna be two times phi times the natural log of phi. And then over here, it's gonna be a minus one. Well, now plus one rather. And then what's great is that I'll factor out the two ln of phi. So it's gonna be, let me put the one in the front. So one minus uh, two times ln of phi, and then the quantity multiply. So it's gonna be uh, now in this case, it's a minus. So that means it's gonna be phi minus one. And then in other words, phi minus one can be written as the identity of one divided by phi. So therefore the final answer really is that this can be written as the same thing as one minus two divided by phi multiplied by ln of phi. And so with that, that is our final answer to a 
uh, the integral that we're dealing with, so the golden ratio number, and of course the exponent being the floor function, just like that, utilizing all these tricks and you know the elementary identity. So it's not it's not as bad as you think it would be from the first glance, but there we have it. Utilizing a, um, for one, we use a uh, Taylor series slash McLaren series to um, substitute this back in. That we utilize the definition over here from a break it up into sums to create it into a sum of integrals, leading to here, make the antiderivative easy to evaluate, which leads to all the simplification over here, leads to the final answer just like that. So there you have it. And um, happy 2023, and let's make 2024 another year to remember. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.